So uh, today's presentation is about resumes and cover letters. So exciting. Um, this is interactive, so you can uh, put your questions into the chat and or just shout them out loudly if you prefer not to type um, anytime. And you heard the recording announcement just now. Uh, since I'm from WCC, uh, here's a plug for the WCC Writing Lab um, for the WCC people. And then you can use the link go.hawaii.edu slash JNV. Um, and then I just wanted to start with a quick sort of, you know, usually I, I wouldn't start a workshop by um, with by asking this question or posing this question, right? Why should the presenter be trusted? Um, but because uh, resumes and cover letters are a topic that change very quickly, that become more specific and more kind of different in the recommendations, depending on how far along you are in your career path or in your academic path. And because the expert advice conflicts sometimes, uh, the answer to this question is, well, maybe you shouldn't 100% trust me. You should trust and verify. So um, reasons to trust me are number one, I, I, you know, I've been doing this a long time. I was trained my college job. One of them was uh, to be a, a resume reviewer. And then um, I've sort of kept this up as a hobby. I've also taught business writing for, I don't know, 15, 16 years. And so as a part of that, um, I've had to um, stay on top of things. And then it's an interest of mine. And, and so that's, you know, um, uh, I have read the expert advice for you and tried to condense it into a format that I think is most beneficial to students who I know. But, um, you know, as again, as you progress in your career, as you progress in your academic field, it's always a good idea to get second opinions. And so here are some second opinions and tools that you might want to look at. Reddit is actually very good. And there are people on Reddit, especially on the subreddit called r slash resume there, um, who well, are sort of shockingly honest about posting resume samples, about showing what their before and after samples were. And then we're going to um, get into some of those in a second. Um, and then um, people who work uh, as recruiters and who see tons and tons of resumes, you know, more than an instructor like me could ever see, um, are on there kind of interacting with people. Um, before I forget, here is the link to the presentation so that you can have it for future reference. Or if my voice starts, starts to ir irritate you, you can pop off and read it on the side. Okay, other good other good tools. Um, SheetsResume.com is fun. Uh, Microsoft and Google Docs have templates you can use. There's a service called My Perfect Resume where they take you step by step through a resume builder and then they charge you $3 at the end, but $3 is not a bad amount of money to spend for some, you know, sort of peace of mind and a fun format at the end. And then the, this black box above my head are links that you'll find on that reddit.com slash r resume. Um, and those, you know, those sort of sidebar getting started links are good to have in your back pocket. Um, all right. We're going to start with a um, just a, a warm up question. So um, if you, however the spirit moves you to type into the chat or just yell out, you can scream your answer if you want. Um, question is, what do you think the purpose of a resume is? Anyone who is um, who is adventurous can type something into the chat or say verbally. And if I get to a count of 10 in my head, maybe I will call on someone. Oh, hint, it's not to get a job or to get a raise, but maybe you knew that already. Oh, wonderful. OK, yeah, to help a uh, potential employer um, hear about you. And so this is uh, Jasmine says, maybe an introduction and a little bit more about yourself. That's, def that's definitely a benefit of um, having a resume put together that a potential employer can look at. Oh, how about Mitchell? Mitchell's camera's on. 
Any guess, Mitchell? Audio problem. Oh, mostly, but yeah. Okay. All right. To present your job experience and your qualifications is another great thing that can happen with a resume. Here, here is the answer. Here is a one of the official answers. Okay. And and the one that I think is sort of shocking, but useful to keep in mind. The purpose of a resume and also your cover letter, cover message is to get noticed by your employer and then try to get a conversation or try to get an interview to happen. All right. So you want to get noticed by a human recruiter. And then also there's a creep, a human recruiter. And then that also rhymes with creepy computer. <laughs> so it's a combination. There's human recruiters, but there are also creepy computers who are going to, who are going to scan and process your resume. And the average amount of time the creepy computer spends is seven seconds. Hey, the average amount of time the human recruiter spends is about 30 to 60 seconds. So the tricky thing for your resume, right? I mean, you you slave over it and you spend a lot of time and you try to get all the P's and Q's sorted, but then people are looking at it sort of very quickly. So the tricky thing is you want you, you want to stand out, but you don't want to be too creative. Okay, there's an asterisk that says, unless you're a designer or an artist, you don't want to be too creative. You don't want to lie. And you don't want to go on for too long. You want to fit on one page unless you have a million years experience doing the same sort of job field. All right. So um, that's a little concerning, right? But we're going to go over some ways to give, your, give you a better chance at being noticed and standing out a bit um, in that short time frame where the human recruiter or the creepy computer is looking at you. Ooh, any, any questions or concerns? All right, feel free to put questions in the chat whenever whenever you have them. Okay, so there's gonna be a quiz, it's interactive. So uh, in, in a minute, there's gonna be a quiz where you have to say which version is better, which is the revised better version, resume number one or resume number two. Okay, here's resume option number one. So let's look at it together. I think the, the, uh, the, the, these are for real resumes that were posted online for people to give them comments. And then they took the comments and they made a revision. So this is a for real person. The name has been redacted. Okay, so this person named name is number. So they put their experience. They say they worked at a place and they're the team member. They use an iPad to take orders. They worked at another place at the dishwasher. They wash dishes and containers. And then they worked at a third place. They were a snack bar attendant. They looked over the cash register, cleaned the cooking area, and performed bar duty. Okay, they were also an English tutor and an ele elementary school tutor, and they have skills and certificates and interests. Okay, resume option one. It's also in two columns and it has colors. All right, think about which one is the original and which one is the revised. Here is resume option two. Resume option two is all in one column. It's black and white. Has the same name, same person named name. And they put their professional accomplishments, seven years in the restaurant business, supported the manager at a previous location, which led to a 15% increase in sales. They know Microsoft Office programs and website building. Okay, and then you'll notice that, so this is the exact same person, right? Team member, uh, this first one, where the so they utilize an iPad, sending orders to the kitchen, and eliminating excess customer wait time. They were a dishwasher. They practiced inventory management skills, and they were a snack bar attendant. They performed bartending for the first time. Um, and I'll move my head. They were a team member in a unique environment. All right. So um, think about it. Here is option two. I'll give you another glance at option one. Oh, they have certificates here too. Uh, their education section lists certificates and trainings they did. All right, here's option one. Okay, and then, oh, Scott, can you uh, open the poll, please? So exciting. Okay, woohoo. At your uh, convenience, can you choose 
which one is the revised version? Which one was the after when they gave response, when they took the advice of the online recruiters and whoever, and then they made some changes? Here's option one. Here's option two. And we'll leave the poll open. How about another 30, 45 seconds or something? No, oh, actually, there's not too much voting happening. Okay, whenever you're ready, click the button. <laughs> Option two. Option one. And here's option two again. Okay, we only had five people vote. How about at least two more people? Click the button. God, people's button finger is broken. Okay, I'm going to end the poll. Ready? So, okay, all right. So we're going to share. Oops, oops, sorry. Can everybody see the results? Oh, Janice says two. All right. Thank you, Janice. So we have four votes for two and two votes for one. Okay. And by a hair, well, okay, I guess it's it's uh, by a ratio of two to one. Uh, you folks got the correct answer. Does anyone want to share any thoughts on uh, why you selected the one that you selected or any questions about why the answer is what the answer is? Option two versus option one? Yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you. Shailene says, hope I'm pronouncing your name right, Shailene. Two had descriptive qualities. Jasmine says, vocabulary seems more professional than number two. Janice says, the order of the resume. Oh, yeah. All right. That's a good, that's a good comment. Janice, can you? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They listed accomplishments. And then you'll know, so Janice says the order of the resume, right? They list the accomplishments. And so the first thing that you look at, aside from their name and their phone number, is seven years in the restaurant business, supporting the manager in a previous location extensively, which led to an increase in sales, stuff like that, right? Okay, good, good, good. All right. So we already, um, oh, other, other things you notice about resume option two? I think those are answers I was thinking about. So we already sort of did this, putting into the chat. Um, to to summarize things that I noticed, which I think you folks are saying um, nicely already, uh, but nobody mentioned the format. So, um, you know, I, I think maybe uh, if initially, like, you, you know, my eye is drawn to the colors and the columns. Okay, um, and that's actually a trick. So I mentioned the creepy computer at the beginning. There is there is a pretty strong school of thought that a simplified format is is a better one to have as your general resume, unless again, unless you're a designer or doing like a create if you're in a creative job field, then it, sometimes it's more important to have you know visual pop. But for a majority of people, simplified format is good. Number one because Again, um, you know, there's no real preference for beauty. It's everybody wants uh, utility. And um, number two, the creepy computer sometimes trips up if there are multiple columns. So a one one column format is safer. And again, one page. Um, then the after version starts with the highlights and skill summary, which is good. Okay, um, and then. We had comments in the chat that talked about the in the improved descriptive qualities and the 
um, descriptions are more professional and detailed. Okay, and then one specific thing to notice it refocuses on outcomes. All right, so um, we'll come back here, and you'll notice that where whereas previously they said things like "I was a dishwasher," um, now they are identifying that they practiced inventory management, right? And then the outcome was that the work environment that would not have previously met guidelines uh, is meeting guidelines now, right? That's a pretty specific, good, solid outcome. Um, and then in this first description, utilize the iPad to eliminate excess customer wait time, right? Those kinds of details weren't mentioned at all in the original version, which just says, uh, used an iPad to take orders and then worked the drive through window, right? So that's that's the um, you know sort of basic task. Uh, in the second version, you can see that they're doing a, a better job of showing like what did what did their contribution end up as? Um, what are they doing better than any average or even bad employee in the same position could be doing? Um, so that's how you can stand out a little bit. Uh, without being too creative and then especially without lying right so don't don't pad or exaggerate okay and then one other thing to notice is that in this second version um, it ensures that there's an education section okay so um, even if you are not finished with your degree yet right for especially for uh, a, you know resume that we're creating in a college setting you definitely I mean you definitely always want your experience but have an education section Right, and then have your skills and accomplishments, and um, those are the things you need. And then, and then, you know, some people also say there's there's a sort of mixed um, feelings about interests. But some people say um, if you put your interests in there, it'll help the interviewer um, relate to you better potentially. Uh, so, so you know, that's another thing that you can look out for. But definitely, experience, education, and then skills, accomplishments need to be fit into there in your one page limit. Okay, here's, we're just gonna do one more example just to um, try to try to set our, our idea. Okay, here's another, um, and then I'm gonna specifically identify it as before now, just so that we don't have to guess. Okay, here's the before. And this one looks, right, it looks different from the previous before. They do have their qualification summary up here near the top. They do have their education. Um, but let, let's sort of look briefly. Um, okay, summary of qualifications. It's a recent Bachelor of Engineering, graduate in chemical engineering, strong or organizational communication skills. And then they have their uh, their bachelor's degree here. Um, relevant project was to demonstrate excellent communication and leadership. And they had a self-directed team capstone. And then they have their work experience, application engineering intern. Okay, and then, um, but it keeps, okay, so this is the first page, and then there's a whole second page. Okay, they were a quick service supervisor responsible for handling cash and completing deposits. Okay, and then they have leadership experience, where they're talking about an engineering orientation. They talk about engineering club, and then they have their skills down here in the bottom. So this person has lots of stuff that they want to include, but they have a slight problem because they're, their uh, resume is twice as long as it needs to be. All right. And, you know, I mean, they, they seem to be doing some good things. So uh, I'm going to give you like five, so well, five seconds isn't long enough. Uh, just just think to, for a moment, think to yourself, okay, what would I do if, um, if I were in this situation? And then, you know, better yet, after this presentation is over, you can come back to slide 11 and the slides that you've downloaded and then just compare and study. Okay, here is person named name again. <laughs> they had their two page resume and now they cut it down to one page. And how did they do this, right? This is something that some of us have the opposite problem of thinking, oh, what am I gonna put in my resume? There's an opposite problem many of us have. I have too much stuff, how do I cut it? So um, here's what this person did. Okay, here they have their summary chemical engineering graduate and elected valedictorian with experience as an application in engineering intern. Okay, they didn't even mention val valedictorian. If you go back and look at the previous one, search for the word valedictorian, see if you can find it. 
Okay, they have their skills. And then one, one interesting thing to note is here's this work experience. Okay, so what did they end up cutting? Number one, they cut a work a paid work experience position, um, which they uh, had previously. And now this is totally eliminated in this new work experience. Okay, um, They moved their accomplishments and skills up and they put the most impressive ones at the top. Right. What did they do instead of having that paid position that was less relevant to the engineering kind of job and career they want? Instead of having the cash handling paid experience, they feature an unpaid relevant experience. Right. So now it's much easier to see these uh, what they what they're doing for, uh, you know, volunteer kind of extracurricular engineering orientation and being an upper year representative in a school setting. And um, they have revised the bullets to focus again on some outcomes and what they're doing specifically, right? So it was responsible for detailed calculations and markup of design drawings resulting in five to 10 more stations processed per day. Fun time, I'm so exciting. All right. Any how's how's the pace of this? Any questions or thoughts or concerns? Going in to the chat. Okay, fine. Just for your um, reference, I'm going to put. You were here before. If you want to um, scrutinize yourself, here's the before resume. Uh, okay, and then there's the after, in case you want to take a look. So exciting. All right. Stop me if you have any questions. Okay, just for good measure, um, if we were thinking about the last after versus here's here's our um our dishwasher, bar attendant, and um, order taker from option A, option B, that option one, option two that you voted on. And this person is doing similar things. Okay, so they start with the accomplishments. They're featuring unpaid, relevant experience, over relevant experience, and they're fitting it on one page. And they're focusing on work related experience that has specific outcomes, as much of a specific, uh, specifically identified outcome as possible. So exciting. Okay, how are how are you going to put your resume? Most people already have um, a resume. Is anyone here getting started for the very first time? Okay, all right, hearing none, no hearing no response to that question. Maybe we can move through this quickly. So what you need at the very beginning is just a header, right? You need to have your name, you need to have your phone, you can have your location, the city state. You don't necessarily have to put your address, right? You can put your LinkedIn profile. You should have a LinkedIn profile, which I will I'll give you specific reasons why you definitely need to join LinkedIn if you haven't joined it yet. Um, relevant social media, not uh, overly personal. If you have a red, if you have a website, and then um, what do you not want to include? You don't include your date or age because. I'm sorry, not date, date of birth or age, because that's a protected category under sort of the house, uh, not, under the hiring rules. Okay. Um, you don't want a non-professional email. The general recommendation is try to have a Gmail email or, you you know, maybe your Hawaii.edu email and, you know, if you, it's not going to expire soon and you don't need a photo unless, so this, you know, unless you live in, a, you're applying to a job in Asia or some parts of Scandinavia, 
that they expect a photo sometimes, but in in the uh, local or mainland setting, no photo. Ooh, any questions about yeah. heading? That's pretty straightforward, right? Okay. Okay. Um, and then you need a a highlights uh, summary or skill summary, highlight summary, accomplishment summary, or skill summary. And you want what you want is is like a happy medium between this and like the one on the left and the one on the right. Okay, so I, I used my own example from LinkedIn, which is pretty short. Uh, and it's short because I already have a job. <laughs> and uh, I've been at Windward since 2005, a million years, and I have no intention of going anywhere else. Um, and so I just tried it out because, you know, again, um, uh, I, uh, I'm trying to keep up with it. But, you know, my my motivation for having a, a resume or LinkedIn that's going to get me a new job is low. Right. And here, here is. Move, move, I'll move my head again. Here is an example from a different um, skill summary section that I found that's pretty intense and long. OK, so. Um, Looking, looking at some of our sample resumes that were actually sent around for applications to jobs. Um, what do you need in there? Uh, number one, need some number of years of experience. Right? You can put in your successes or awards, however many of those are, try to cram them in there. And then you can put in your relevant skills. So here from our sample resume, um, the second option that we voted on um, are those are those items the okay, number of years successes skills and uh, awards okay what I said up top is you need in addition to those skills you need an education section and an experience section and how you're going to structure your resume really depends on what is going to show your best trajectory. What is gonna show your best trajectory, your sort of arc in life and career and education. For many students, especially if you're here, kind of either getting your first degree or getting a new certificate or degree for career change, you put your education first because it shows the direction you're on and the direction you want to head in, right? Um, if, however, you have lots of terrific experience and that shows even more than your education, the direction that you want to be going in and the, the way that you're working toward getting there, then put experience first, right? So you want to organize your resume so that people reading it, and again, some, some people have a huge stack of resumes and they, they need to go through them very quickly. You want the best stuff to be at the top. So when you're organizing your own resume, uh, put the the uh, most kind of impressive, important things in the beginning and then have it ordered by order of emphasis. What is going to show your trajectory better? Put that first. All right. Um, how do you, does anybody have any questions about what you put in your education section? Put where you're going to school, degrees and certificates. And then in the very first example, if you if you recall, they didn't have colleges or schools listed. If you have something else, uh, an online training, um, then put those things also. Okay, Scott put in the chat, do you ever list GPA? The old rule used to be uh, put your GPA if you like it. Uh, and then a maybe a, a, a more kind of uh, coherent guideline is uh, put your GPA if it's above 3.3. I've seen um, above 3.0. Uh, and then you can also, I, I think maybe 3.3 is safer. You can also um, have a, a different way of calculating GPAs that are to your advantage, right? Many I've, I've seen examples where people put their GPA in their major or in their program. So if you would want to um, include that that way, that's one way to put your GPA. Um, the the rule about putting your GPA if you like it, uh, put you follow that rule as long as it doesn't require 
you explaining in person while you like it, right? I mean, there are lots of great reasons to like a 2.7 GPA if you really had to, you know, try work up work super hard to get that GPA yeah, up get twenty dollars. But um, yeah, three three point or three point three. Okay, so um, I mentioned that you need to be on LinkedIn, and the reason why is that even though there are all sorts of resume building tools now, um, the the your better bet is to be able to see as many real life examples of people describing their work experience who are in the field that you want to get into, and use that to think about like what what does this what do people in this career field value? And what are they saying about themselves that they are using these details to demonstrate their own their own skill and capacity and and potential as a job candidate? Um, and so what what you should do is so join LinkedIn, number one, and then uh, make a friend or connection on LinkedIn with someone who has a ton of of LinkedIn friends, so, so so that could be your your coworker, it could be your instructor, it could be your counselor, it could be me or Scott or Tasha, right? People who have a bunch of LinkedIn connections because what that does is that un unlocks LinkedIn and allows you to search for all kind of stuff and find examples of people posting about their job experience. Um, in a wide, wide variety of fields, right? So here's mine. I have, this is from my, one of my LinkedIn connections of a connection, right? Senior research radiology uh, technician at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York, New York. I have never like sniffed the air in Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, right? But apparently one of my connections has. And so then you can see a pretty detailed description of what this what this uh, radiology tech person is doing. Um, okay, what do you need to have in your experience section? Again, you're putting your impressive, important things first. You're gonna focus as much as possible on improving on how your work has improved things at your workplace or what outcomes it got. And then you're gonna use um, annoying uh, resume writing style. So start each sentence with an action verb, and then you can Google action verbs, um, or you can have a fun uh, action verb list. I'm gonna put into the chat a nice Google doc that Scott put together that has resume action verbs in it, so exciting. Okay, and then include details that show how you did it and what the outcomes were. So here's an example, again, from Reddit. You swept the floor three times faster by using two brums at once. I mean, that's a silly example, but that's that's sort of the, the general idea. Okay, and then again, you can look at examples on LinkedIn to see how people are describing their work and then use that to you know get a sense of what you're going to put into your own. Um, you need skills and accomplishments again. So this is bolded and underlined just to emphasize that that's, that's the most recommended one. If you have language skills, if you have certificates, awards and honors, and then as we've seen in um, the, the example, the, the sample resumes we've been looking at, um, relevant projects, relevant school activities or, or, or unpaid related activities and relevant interests. And then again, Talking about interests gives the interviewer, gives the recruiter a way to relate to you and, and possibly extend the conversation that you're going to have when you're being interviewed. Okay. Oh, I should move my fat head to this side. All right. Um, fine tuning. Fine tuning. So um, some of the some of the resume, and then you know, I, I wish there was a there was a. a workshop earlier this semester on using AI with resumes that I wasn't able to attend. So I, I don't know. I hopefully my take on it is in line a little bit with theirs, but I'm going to tell you uh, about some AI tools that are fairly useful and how to use them in an ethical way. Um, why is an English teacher going to tell you that using AI tools to help with your resume is generally okay? Okay. So number one, uh, it's not an English paper, right? So papers, and other forms of academic writing 
are about creating knowledge, about generating knowledge, calibrating it, so making sure it's correct, about sharing the knowledge, and then advancing and preserving it. Okay, and then also there's, especially in a school setting, there's a strong learning component, right? AI kind of undermines and crapifies all of that, right? It makes mistakes. Um, some uh, AI related resume generation, which I will not recommend, and I'm not gonna say what the names of them are, but I've tried a bunch of them out. They will put lies into your resume and say, I, I did 20% of this. And my, the group I worked with was 500 people when you never like put those things in there to begin with, right? Just sort of throws outcomes and numbers in. So you don't want that. Um, all right, what is a resume in contrast to a paper? A resume is a translation onto paper uh, of your work and life skills. And then it's optimized for a 30 to 60 second scan. Okay, or or we said earlier, the uh, a ATS, the creepy computer scans for seven seconds. All right, so the context of resumes is different. It's a different context. It has a different tradition and a different set of ethics. And in fact, paid resume writers, people who will write your resume for you or who will do um, super heavy editing, that's basically writing it for you, are generally understood to be doing work that's fine ethically. Whereas if uh, I were to be working for a paper mill, that would be fraud, since, especially since I'm an English teacher, but in general. All right. Any questions about that? So exciting. You're just waiting to see what the AI recommendation is. Okay, so uh, the the first recommendation is just to use your, reg and then um, I would do not recommend AI that is identified as a resume one. You can just use ChatGPT or there, there are ones that are better than ChatGPT, but I'm not gonna tell you what that is either. Okay, you just use the, and then so this, if you use ChatGPT, a regular AI, a la large language model, what you wanna do is you need to give it very specific instructions. So don't just tell it to do whatever, but um, use this sentence that I have at the top of the slide. The sentence is, please turn these experiences into bullets for a resume, list in order of importance, highlight impressive details, and limit adjectives, limit adjectives. I, I played around and you need to tell it to limit the adjectives because otherwise it's gonna poop out a sentence that's all that's overly fancy sounding. And the, the person reading your resume is gonna be like, oh, what, what is this? What's up with this person? Okay, and then what I did was I just, I'd spent like, 20 seconds, literally. And I thought about my, one of my very first jobs in life was to uh, be a summer fun, uh, summer aide. And I wrote a bunch of stuff okay. and I, and I put it, I copied it directly into the slide with all the mistakes. So I didn't capitalize. I misspelled organization. Where's the misspell? Oh, maybe I misspelled some other word. I just said, had the kids do activities like crafts. There was a crafts project where they got a straw and blew the paint across the paper. I made an activity for them where they made Rice Krispies treats, right? So you can describe what you did in your, in your job in a way that is uh, natural and how you would naturally write it and say it. Oh, here it is. I organized an outing to Aia District Park where there is a pool. Okay, so here's what I wrote. And then I said, please turn it into bullets for a resume, list in order of importance, highlight and limit adjectives. And then this is what it did. Okay, and it's it's pretty decent. It doesn't lie. It didn't say how many kids were in the group when I never told it. It's not putting in extra details that uh, are wrong. Um, and it even, it even um, categorized them for me. So for the resume, I would probably just copy the bullets and um, wordsmith a little bit and then consider putting them in my resume. I wouldn't put in these categories necessarily, but it does a decent job. Right? Organized, engaging activities, including a unique paint blowing crafts project using straws, promoting creativity among children. <laughs> and again, um, this sounds like a credible resume sentence. And it's because of this limiting adjective. So if you don't tell it to hold off on putting too much fancy schmancy, it'll it'll put in fancy schmancy 
wording that sounds creepy and weird. Okay. Uh, you can also use this tool to help with your resume summary, to help with your resume summary. So once you have your, once you have your resume drafted and you looked at LinkedIn, you wrote up, uh, doing this step is very important. This is what I, so if you were paying me to help you write your resume, I would make you sit down and spend like one hour and talk to me about all the things you did in your position, including describing like how you made the, the activity, what your strategy or approach to running the cash register was. That's how those people in the previous samples were able to be that detailed it's because they spent a significant amount of time um, getting everything down. Okay, and then that's time consuming because you spent all this energy thinking and brainstorming about what you did in the job. And then you have to translate it into resume style. Okay, the AI sort of takes that second step, turning all of your brainstormed ideas and it makes it much faster and more efficient. Okay, so you can spend more time remembering what you did, trying to articulate what happened, and then use a regular large language model, chat GPT, something like that. Don't spend money. And it'll it'll turn it into the resume writing style without lying. And so that's important. And then, so this is so what I did was um, I I have I had a finished resume. I was just playing around with it. And I took my friend's resume, I pooped the whole thing in there. So you can, once you have your resume, you can poop the whole resume into chat GPT or whichever one. Okay. And then you use this sentence, please write a summary of the following resume. And you can tell it exactly how many words, All right? So here's this sentence, please turn these experiences. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Sorry, that's the, that's the old sentence. I have to learn how to use copy and paste. Okay, please. So you poop your whole resume in there. Please write a summary of the following resume that is no longer than 50 words. Or if you feel like 50 words is too long, that is no longer than 30 words. Include only the most important highlights. Right? And then it wrote up a summary that, you know, it was okay. So this wasn't exact. And then we, so I went and I talked to my friend and then we adjusted. But he, you know, it, 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 it's a good place to start. It's a nice draft of your summary. Sometimes it's hard to think about how am I going to write a statement about myself and my whole life and a short, you know, 50 or 40 word little chunk um, that that can seem like a very daunting task. Uh, the, the chat GPT can help with that. Make that process less painful. All right. Fine. Any thoughts or questions about this? Okay, so please use these. The The important thing about using a chat GPT like thing is to give it specific instructions and then play around with instructions. So uh, it's the opposite of, of a uh, internet search where you have to try to use keywords and operators, right? So site colon hawaii.edu and then you search for the keyword for your research paper it's not the same for this for this you need to have a specific uh, instruction created for you to get it to do what you need it to do okay here is the old this is what i recommend i've been recommending this wordtune.com it's basically it's all it's also an ai tool but it it's less powerful but um, when you when you want to do uh, individual sentences, it's good for giving you um, a, a little bit. It's it's less. Uh, you don't need to tinker with giving it correct instructions. It'll it'll do rewording for you. Um, if you want to do just one sentence at a time, and then you don't have the energy or uh, motivation to craft what kind of instruction you're going to give it. It just is going to do this one thing, um, giving you different versions of a sentence that you want to work with. So wordtune.com is useful. Okay, and then um, here, here is a, um, 
important additional fine tuning step that seems really anal retentive and overly fussy, but is important um, to think about because the people who are applying for jobs and are in the job pool with you are going to be doing similar things. And um, because more and more people are going to use this, you know, the AI tools, they will be able to do this next anal retentive step faster. And so it's good to try to get a handle on it. And okay, so what you, what you want to do is the next even more intense step, and this is especially for a job you, you kind of really want, is to gather job ads. So you go on LinkedIn, another reason again to have LinkedIn, you go on Indeed or Hire at Hawaii, or you go straight to the organization where you know you want to get the position, and then you find the ad where it describes what the responsibilities are, but then especially what the qualifications are. And then you make a list of the things that the ad is mentioning and the exact vocabulary that they're mentioning. And then you're going to use those keywords and phrases in your resume. All right. And then uh, what you can do, this, this recommendation is still for jobs that you really, really want. But because the tools are making this easier, you can do it for jobs that you sort of want or jobs that you maybe want. And you tailor your resume each time using words and phrases from those positions. And there are tools that'll help make this process much faster. So um, the tool on the slide is sgpt.app. And it will, if you copy and paste and add in there, it will identify what the key keywords and key phrases are that would be good to put into your resume. Um, and then here are a couple of others. So there's that first one I just put into the chat. Um, another sgpt.app page that will, um, uh, it'll, what, where am I looking? It'll sort of tailor, if you, you can put in the job ad and your resume and it'll help adjust. It'll make suggestions for adjusting. And then there's another one in, in the chat, jobscan.co. Um, they have a tool where it'll scan your resume and scan the job app and then make res make recommendations about um, what changes to make. Uh, job scan, I didn't put in the slide because you get to a point where they want to charge you. And the, this first um, site, sgpt.app, um, I didn't run into that payment thing um, as quickly or at all, I think. Okay. Any questions about any of, that was a lot of information. Okay, uh, I'll just quickly talk about cover letters or cover messages and show you a sort of most intense, um, uh, effective way of making your cover letter again for jobs that you really really want. Here's just an image. You, you can Google cover letters, and they're they're uh, much more well. I don't know if they're much more straightforward, but to me they seem a little bit more straightforward in terms of what are the standard recommendations, right? They're pretty much the same. Whatever kind of position you're applying to, um, you aside from your contact information, you have. Uh, a paragraph saying how you heard about the job, why you think you're a good match, and why you think you're a good candidate, and then also who's referring you. If someone is referring you, right, you want to mention specifically who your network connection is. Okay, then you're going to provide specific examples to indicate which skills and experience are a match for the position. And then you thank the employer and look forward to an interview. And you can mention, hey, I'm going to give you a call in a couple of weeks just to express my interest and then you can actually call them. And what that does is they make, you know, it sort of makes your name chime in their brain um, because you're contacting them, you're expressing interest. They have to go look for your application, all that, right? That's, that's kind of old school advice, but I think it's still good to follow. All right. And, you know, there, there, there's tons of sample cover letters out there um, that you can 
again, um, you know, look for a template. All right, um, here, here's the most intense version. So um, if you are someone who experiences hiring someone down the line, what you will um, come to feel is something that I think most people who have ever had to be in a position of hiring someone has felt is that if I have to pour through your resume and your cover letter and hunt and peck to find the information that I need to fill out my annoying chart, I will already start to like you less than I like the other person, right? So some people will be very organized about arranging their cover letter in such a way that I can fill out my super anal retentive sheet and do it quickly and then evaluate you with a good color instead of red. Okay. And so what you do is for your cover letter, you wanna look carefully at what the job ad says is the qualification. They look carefully at what you say, what the job ad says is the qualification and then spell out in the cover letter in the order. So here's the order of the qualifications listed, listed from a sample job. Uh, it was a library job. And then um, sort of go through and explain how you meet the qualification that was listed in the in the job ad in your cover letter. Okay. <clears throat> um, what you want to, when you're looking in a job ad, uh, a good tip is that you want to ignore as much, not ignore, but you want to focus less on the responsibilities and you want to focus more on the qualifications. Okay, so a resume starts with an R and responsibilities go on your resume while you have the job or after you had the job. All right, if you're applying for a job, right? That's what you're looking at the job ad for. These are things that can go in the cover letter. Uh, there are the qualifications and the requirements. Co cover letter, co qualifications. All right, and this, this is what you're addressing in your cover letter is what are they looking for in a qualified applicant? For a lot of these jobs, the responsibilities are responsibility that you can't fulfill until you get the job, right? How many, so this is from, Here's another, here's another fun example of LinkedIn, but I can type in radio host into my LinkedIn. And because I'm linked to 10 million people, there, there will be radio host jobs that pop up and radio, radio hosts, radio hosts who pop up and I can look at their LinkedIn page. So um, here was a, um, here was a job ad for a radio host and they were asking for things like a bachelor's degree in film, previous experience, must have video samples, Okay, um, a lot of the responsibilities of a radio host, you won't get until you become a radio host, right? So, um, but there are qualifications you can have, like having a bachelor's degree in film, right? Being organized, having energy, being highly motivated. You can describe uh, what, your, what your qualifications are before you have the job in your cover letter in the exact order that they're listed in the job ad, and that all help you um, stand out from the other candidates. And then especially if you have a good resume that um, is put together, focused on outcomes, that has your skills and accomplishment highlights and your education and your experience, and um, sort of is demonstrating that you're a good match or as best possible description of how you match with the, uh, the job position as possible. Right, fun times. Blabbed so much. Does anyone have a question or a comment?